painkiller. Hallelujah. All is like your presence, sweet one. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The presence of the great God is here. I want us to collect our tithe and offerings. You can collect it here and online. to get it ready hallelujah God is here God is here God is here are you ready to pray with me as we collect our tithe and offerings hallelujah say father in the name of Jesus as I give to you I believe your word that I will receive good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. That's your promise for my life and my descendants forever. I renounce poverty and I embrace the blessings of the Lord. My Lord God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And I bless those who are giving online and I bless also that they will receive the same blessings. And all those who have sent their check here, they will receive the same blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we finished with that tithe and offerings? Okay. 
praise the Lord. Thank you all for your faithfulness. Today we will finish the introduction to the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. We have some announcements to make. The first is that we have a new member of our church. Baby Enoch Mulet has been born. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's a little boy by Pastor Goloa and the beloved wife, Lily Michelle. We welcome baby en Enoch in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. The baby is here. Welcome you, an inherent member of the church, youngest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand up together and just give this time to the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, we worship you. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. We thank you for your presence. We release our spirit, souls, and bodies into your hands. And we say, Holy Spirit, be exalted, be glorified, be magnified. Welcome to this place. Thank you for speaking to us. Because these are your gifts. You will speak to us, Lord. And you will show us and show us how these gifts function. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we dealt with ministry gifts last week. And sit down, please. Ministry gifts last week. And the core of the ministry gift is what? The person himself is the gift. Not last week, last two weeks, sorry. The core of the ministry gift is what? And what, what are the gifts? Who knows? The five main ministry gifts. Yes, apostle? Prophets, yes. No, you have to go by the order. Evangelists, yes. Pastors, yes. And teachers, teachers at the, at the, at the end there. So, uh, uh, again, I want somebody tell me by the order the names, yes. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. Perfect, you got it. Hallelujah. You must get it by the order at which the scripture gives it. Amen? Because it has spiritual significance. Hallelujah. It has what? Spiritual significance. So you must get it by what? The order. Amen? Praise the Lord. As I explained last week, or last two weeks, the gifts are, are given, the person himself is the gift. He gave some to be apostles. Amen? To be what? apostles to be prophets to be so the person himself is the gift his very makeup his nature is the gift the person himself or herself is the gift amen example the apostle paul was the gift to the gentiles amen called to be an apostle to who to the gentiles and we explained that an apostolic gift is both a ministry gift and uh, and also an office. Amen? Because apostles have authority over churches, just like elders and pastors have authority over churches. So therefore, an apostle is both a gift and, and what? And say with me, an office. Amen. A place of authority. So with ministry gift, the person himself is the gift. It, uh, 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 his whole being is the gift. So that's why it cannot be transferred. It cannot be transferred. For example, you cannot just transfer an evangelistic gift. For example, take, let's, let's say, let's take our dear brother Felix. He has the gift of a pastor and the gift of an administrator. And he, he fixes things, he corrects things. He's somebody who, when he's in somewhere, things go well, things go correctly. Now, you want to transfer a different gift and give him. Because let's say you are, God is taking you home 
And you want to give him a different gift. You lay hands on him. He said, no, I move you from your pastoral gift to, <laughs> to, to the gift of an apostle. It doesn't work. You know why it doesn't work? Why? Because only Jesus makes people that way. And they are born that way. Their very character is part of their gifts. Their temperament, the way they are made, they are made to be that way. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you are give, you are made to be that way. I know you don't have your neighbors now, your neighbors are so far. But you can whisper to your neighbor there. You are made to be that way. Your very temperament is your gift. Amen. Hallelujah. Your very temperament is your gift. There are people who have certain gifts that may not even know they do. They may not even know that they have it. But they have the gift. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that um, Stephen is a teacher pastor. Amen. And but he has not yet developed his gift of teaching. He's a great teacher. He teaches physically, but he, he, he can teach spiritually too. Amen. If he builds the gift. Hallelujah. If he builds the gift, he can teach and teach well. Hallelujah. And I see you writing books, but you may not be seeing it now, but I see it coming and it's, and it's coming soon. Hallelujah. The gifts is there. The gifts are there. But you must build a gift, you must strengthen the gift, you must prepare the gift, and you must work at the gift. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I am giving what they call a reminder of what I shared last two weeks. And I'm just saying, the person himself is the gift. Say with me, the person himself is the gift. Amen. So it cannot be divorced from the person. God himself made the person that way. When you were born, you were put, some characteristics were put inside of you. That's why you are different from your wife. Different from your husband. Have you, have you realized you are different from your wife? Eh? No, for those who are married, I'm looking at the wrong side. Can you imagine what is happening to me? How can I be looking at Sangalong's side, my dear? That, that is so unfair. <laughs> I should be looking at this side. Because there's one married person there. And <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. One of them who was married has just gone and she's coming back. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. <laughs> so I was looking at the wrong side. So and asking questions that cannot be answered there. Uh, so let me look at this side. Have you realized yet, even though you're newly wedded there, you realize that you are different. And it's a good difference. Amen. You don't have to have somebody that is just like you sitting in the house. You'll be very boring. Hallelujah. It will just be boring. Most often, as my wife shares in marriage conferences, most women are looking for uh, another woman in a man. But I hope you're not the one that is looking for another woman in a man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because Brad Clement is a clear man. You will not find You will not find <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what I'm saying is that uh, the person's character, you are built that way. Say with me, I am built that way. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want one person to stand up and worship God. Because that's the mystery of God, the goodness of God. Do you have the microphones? Thank God that God made you even from the your temperament you were born to be a particular gift lord we worship you because you are a unique god we worship you because there is perfection in your creation even from the time we were born or from the time we were conceived you knew our purpose in life and you built us specifically to fulfill that purpose we thank you because you are god who sees the end from the beginning and you know it all we thank you because you are a God who creates uniquely and you create for a purpose and you bring that purpose to fulfillment. We thank you because each one of us is uniquely created, we are uniquely gifted, and we are gifted for your purpose. Thank you for your God who is so special. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the right way to pray. 
He's a special God. He did a wonderful job. Amen. He did a perfect job. Say with, say with me, he did a perfect job. Amen. Have you not noticed that sometimes Sangalongs, they love to sit together? It's just a passing statement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. To God be the glory. <laughs> Even with the, what they call social distances. There's a social distance going on right here. There's few people who are here. But in the social distances, you notice the Sangalong moving to one corner. Hallelujah. Uh, God is a good God. Amen. Now let's go to, we gave an introduction to ministry gift. Now let's give an introduction to spiritual gifts. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. If you are there, can you put it on the board? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 11. First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, we have it on the board now. Are you ready? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you to be ignorant. Hallelujah. Now concerning spiritual gifts, what? I will not do what? I will not have you to be ignorant. So God is saying... Even if you choose to be ignorant about many things, spiritual gifts should not be one of them. God is saying, God doesn't want you to be ignorant. This, is, this was not just Paul saying, it was the Holy Spirit. You know, the, it, uh, this is the word of God. It was the Holy Spirit saying to the church, saying to the people of God, concerning spiritual gifts, you don't have room to be ignorant about it. Amen. This is very serious to the body of Christ. I'm pleading with you. Understand. Because on the judgment day, you will stand before God to give account of this verse. It is very serious. Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to you, not just for your sake, but for the benefit of all. It means that God has chosen to give a gift to you that will be used as a blessing to millions around the world. If you do not make use of that gift, you choose to be ignorant about it, God will judge you on the last day. Remember what Jesus said about the, 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 um, the parable of the talent. He gave what? Five talents to who? To one person. The other one had how many talents? Two. Two, isn't it? What happened with the five talents? Guy. He multiplied it. What happened with the two talent guy? Multiplied. What happened with the one talent? He buried it. The, the majority of problem today is not necessarily the five talent or two talent is the one talent. Many people have their gifts, but they have buried it. They have various spiritual gifts, but they never make use of it. It says here, yeah, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you to be ignorant. God doesn't want you or me to be ignorant. You must study it. You must get to know it. You must get to know the gift you have. You cannot die without knowing your gift. Amen? Say with me, I will not die without knowing my gifts. On the judgment day, you will account for the gifts that you have buried. The things that God called you, you were to be used by God, but you buried it. Many of us here have particular gifts, but we are too busy to make them happen. We are busy with other stuff. We are busy with other things. And the scripture says clearly that it is not one thing that you should be ignorant about. Hallelujah. Say with me, I will not be ignorant. In Jesus' name. So God expects you to know. I insist, God expects you to know. Verse 2 says, You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto this dumb idol. Just put um, New King James if you have it. 
So I think it may be clearer from verse 2 downward. Okay, are you there? You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however ye were led. Now listen carefully. Why were they carried away? Because whether we like it or not, the world longs for the supernatural. They long for what? The supernatural. The world is longing for the supernatural. So God is saying, you were carried away by these things in the world. When you were in the world, you desire to see Mungang Man. You desire to understand what uh, uh, <laughs> Mungang Man is doing. Or the other, uh, how do they call it? Soothsayers and what? Diviners and palm readers and the rest. You were somehow captivated by that. You were trying to know your future. You were trying to know stuff. You were carried by dumb idols. That's what the Lord is saying. God is saying that you, now that you are in Christ, there's a spiritual path which provides all the answers of the dumb idols. Amen? There's a spiritual path. God doesn't want you to be ignorant. God doesn't want you to be ignorant about your future. And he has given gifts to each one of us to manifest the gifts of the spirit. It is manifesting the opposite of those dumb idols. Those dumb idols are useless. But the spirit of God is in you to magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now in verse 3, the Bible says, it continues. Let's read together. It says, therefore I make known to you that no man, no one speaking by the Spirit of God cause Jesus a curse. Now he's saying that, listen carefully, when it's of the Spirit, it will glorify the Lord. Amen? And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now when it is of the Spirit, it will do what? It will glorify God. If it's not of the Spirit, it does what? It does what? It doesn't glorify God. That's the difference. You'll be able to know that a gift is of God or not. So, and not any manifestation of a gift when you find in the street is of God. Amen? If somebody there reading palms and making uh, his witchcraft and the rest, don't think that is God. No, it's not God. It's of the devil. Amen? So, don't just go there because that person, you can guarantee, will not give glory to God who give glory to one of those demons. But the gifts of the Spirit brings glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Hallelujah. This is when now, there is now the revelation of the gifts of God. Diversity of gifts, but what? The same Spirit. Say with me, the same Spirit. The gift, that's why they are called the gifts of who? The Spirit. Hallelujah. They are called what? The gifts of the Spirit. So therefore, the gifts belong to who? The Holy Spirit. You must therefore develop a close relationship with who? The Holy Spirit. If I want a nice gift, a man from Brother Clement, I must have a relationship with Brother Clement. A man? How many times, Raklim, have you passed in the street and somebody have no relationship with and you remove a thousand dollars and give that person? <laughs> it doesn't happen. Amen? But he has given me gifts. Why? Because of a relationship. Amen? If you want the gifts of the Spirit, most often we always think that God is so much different from us. We don't know that we're creating the image of God. And there are certain things that are in us that God himself put. Amen? Because we make, we make like him. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you people of God, just as you love a nice environment that suits you, God also loves an environment that suits him. That's nature to man and nature to God. Holiness is God's environment. He lives in holiness. Worship is God's environment. He lives in that environment. Once you worship, what happens? You invite him to, you are creating a house for the Lord. Amen? So once the place is holy, he shows up. It attracts him. 
is the same. Amen? You have your environment too that you like. Eh, Brother Steve, there are some environment that you like. Some that make you run away. That's the truth. Amen? Build an environment for God and he will show up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, people of God, you are, most often we think that we are so different and the rest, it is the fall of man that has made man to think that he is just a man who comes to Christ. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. What do you have to do? Develop it. Develop it. Stop thinking like the world. Begin to think like God. Hallelujah. By doing what? Reading and building yourself in the word. Because the word reveals the nature and character of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, I love Jesus. Amen. So there are diversities of gifts. But what? The same spirit. So the gifts come from who? So who do you build a relationship with? If you want to magnify the name of the Lord, if you want to manifest the gift, you must go get close to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So not, don't forget, I want you to note that there are diversities of gift, but it is the what? The same Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that released those nine gifts. The nine gifts of the Spirit, which you will soon read. Now, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5 says what? Let's read together. There are differences of what? Ministries by the same Lord. Who is the one who gives ministry gifts? The Lord Jesus. Amen? It's stated here. And uh, as we shared before, the Bible says, when he, he, when he ascended, he did what? He led captivity captives. And he did what? He gave gifts unto men. He ascended. Who ascended? Jesus. He led captivity what? captive and then he did what he gave gifts unto men so the lord who ascended is the one who gave the gifts that's what they say they are differences of ministries ministries amen but what the same lord it is the same lord jesus who gave the different ministries apostles and what apostles apostolic ministry prophetic ministry evangelistic ministry Pastoral ministry and teaching ministry. All those are ministries. They are different ministries of the body, but they are given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the manifestations of the differences of the Godhead. Now, verse 6. And let's read together. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Now they are talking about the Father. Hallelujah. Diversities of what? activities the activities are different the activities the movement of god are very different but it is the same god who works all in all so it is trying to let you know that in spite of all the ministries in spite of all the gifts they work together in an activity and that activity can be a local church it can be a ministry like benny hinn's ministry it can be a ministry like reynard bonke's ministry so we are part of God's activity. We are part of God's movement. And I want to put it, um, uh, my, my version says it differently. My version says, and there are diversities of operations. Can you put King James just for that verse? I want it so that you see the different explanation there. Verse 6. Can we read together? It says what? Operations, amen? Operations represents movement. God's movement. CMFI is an operation. It's what? It's a movement. Hallelujah. But it is the same God who worked all in all. Different operations. Deeper life. Call any operation. Redeem. Winner's chapel. These are different operation they are all led by the father amen they, but it has the gifts of the holy spirit in operation given by who the holy spirit then it has ministries different ministries given by who 
the Lord Jesus Christ. But in all these, there are different, you see, operation is in S, isn't it? It is based on different movements. God is completely in charge of this operation here. Amen? So he is in control of what is happening here. That's why when you come, he sees you. When you come with different gifts, you come to play the drum. You make sure that no matter where you drive, you make sure that no matter where you go, you go to, to, to South Carolina and you go to Florida and the rest. But on Sunday, you are here. God sees you. Because you are making sure God's operation keeps functioning. Hallelujah. And God's operation is full of different ministries. Different ministries. Different gifts. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is the operation of God. This is God's operation in this place. In this area. Hallelujah. There are operation in other places. In other areas. Even in this city and out of this city. God has his operations going on. God has what the other version called activities. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. Can somebody pray and bless the name of the Lord? For the mastermind is God himself. He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. Lord, I want us to be in God. action Hallelujah. today to Hallelujah. pray and the rest because you, the gifts of the Spirit are you, actions. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pray, pray, please. We thank praise you. you, Father, Lord. We just worship you as we see the beauty of the Godhead manifested, oh God, in the Word. The spiritual gifts from you, wonderful Holy Spirit, and the ministry gifts from you, wonderful Jesus, and the Godhead who operates all in all, who puts everything together. We worship you for the beauty of the three in one God. We worship you. We praise you, God, because of the different operations that you're running around the world. Sometimes we think that we are the only ones, Lord, but you're running the operations all over the world. And all over the world, your spirit is moving and your spirit is working. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for being the for the privilege of being part of this operation here in Westminster, Lord. Thank you for your ability for putting us here to serve this operation oh god and it shall not fail because we are here oh god you're using the activities here to glorify your name oh god thank you oh god for your operations around the world in jesus name amen amen hallelujah and for a successful operation you see for a successful operation there must be the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. That's number one, isn't it? There must be what? What's number one? Number one is what? The gifts of the Spirit. Say with me, the manifestation of what? The gifts of the Spirit. The second aspect is what? Ministries. Amen? Holy Spirit, verse 4, reveals what? Gifts of the Spirit. Verse 5, reveals what? The ministry gifts. But they function in one operation. They are where? In an operation. Hallelujah. Say with me, in an operation. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Who's knocking there? To, to God be the glory. So just to let you know, people of God, it is so important to understand these things because the manifestations of God functions in order. Say with me, in order. God is bringing this to you to understand that the gifts are there. That's great. Ministries are formed, but they function under God's operation. It means that you need the body of Christ for the ministry to function. Amen? Amen? You need what? You don't exist on your own. They, you are part of God's mighty operation. Hallelujah. You are part of what? God's mighty operation. God's mighty activities. And those activities, some can be just a local church. Some can be a whole ministry. Those activities are the activities of the Father. Hallelujah. They are all God's work. Amen. Say with me, God's work. And in God's work, 
they are gifts of the Spirit. They are ministries of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I am blessed sharing these things because it brings order to the body of Christ. To God be the glory. Now, verse 7. What does verse 7 say? Let's read verse 7. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. But the manifestation of what? Of the Spirit is, is given what? To, to each one for the profit of all. Wow! This is wonderful. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to, say with me, each one. Each one. It means you have the gift of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's given to each one for the profit of all. So it's not given to Fanel so that Fanel can sit with it and have fun. It is given so that Fanel can become a blessing of the, to the whole body. It's given for the profit of all. Say with me, for the profit of all. Amen. The manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit is given for, for what? Say, for the profit of all. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I give you the glory, Lord Jesus. Amen. So it's not just given for somebody to take it and sit home. And begin to proclaim, I have a gift. No, but I have a gift. Oh, soon the world will know that I have a gift. You never make use of the gift. You just proclaim you have a gift. And the gift never works. You never use it. That is dangerous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's read now. These are the manifestations of the Spirit. It says here, yeah, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. To the profit of uh, uh, to the profit of all, Hallelujah. For to one is given. Say with me, the profit of all. The profit of all. You are not. Sure, I know you are few, but at least shout, shout. Let let let's feel as though this place is full. For the profit of all. Hallelujah. Amen. So therefore. Stephen, that gift is not just for you. It's for everybody. So that everybody will profit. If you have the gift of exaltation, amen, most often the gift of exaltation, like you have the gift of exaltation, you lead people to worship, you lead people, most often the gift of exaltation goes with the prophetic gift. Yes. Amen. It goes with the prophetic gift. Because prof the prophetic gift is given for exhortation. Amen? So, this is what I should tell you, people of God. Once you notice that you have a particular gift, when we start teaching on the details of the gift, you understand it. Once you know you have a particular gift, you ask yourself, what can that gift do? How, 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 how can it be linked with another gift? Do you get what I'm saying? Once you link it with that gift, then you can know the right that you should have. For example, I know that the gifts of the gifts of of an evangelist goes with the gift of power. And I've been insisting to cast out demons. I've been insisting to raise to heal the sick. I've been insisting why? Why? It goes with the gift of power. I know that it's the right of an evangelist to manifest those gifts. Amen. Now called to be an apostle. An apostle also goes with the gifts of power. Amen? An apostle is, 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 he has been given those gifts. And I've been called to, go, to be an apostle. So as, a, as, as, as uh, an apostle, you must manifest those gifts. Amen? So therefore, I pray for those gifts, knowing that they are the right to the ministry gift that I have. So I want you to understand that you pray for the gifts, conscious that they are right to you. Hallelujah. If, the, if you have a gift of exaltation, you must understand that you have the gift 
of prophecy as well. Hallelujah. So you build yourself in the prophetic so that you become a mighty blessing. Are you getting me? To God be the glory. To God be the glory. You may not necessarily be a prophet, but you have the gift of prophecy. Are you, are you understanding me? You are not a prophet because a prophet office is different. As you understand the prophet office, most prophets must manifest at least three gifts. At least three of the vocal gift or gifts of revelation. If you don't manifest up to three of those gifts, you are not a prophet. Amen. So don't just prophesy one day and then proclaim, I am a prophet and start shouting all over the place. The prophet. No, 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 no. Many of the people who call themselves prophets today are not prophets. They are not. They have just one gift that is manifesting and they just believe that they are now prophets. No, 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 no. To stand in the prophetic office, you must be able to have authority manifesting in three of the gifts. And those three of the gifts are gifts that either the vocal gifts or the revelation gifts. Amen? You understand them? You understand that? Amen? Praise the Lord. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, the names of the, the now the gifts are now being defined. Let's go now to verse 8. Verse 8 to verse, uh, and continue from there. It says what? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. 41. Read, read aloud. One, two, yes, thank you. You know, I had a long reading. One, two, three, go. Let's go. 41 is giving the word of wisdom through the spirit to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Now, let's come to the mystery of the other gifts. The first ministry gift, <clears throat> the first gift, ministry gift, we said what? The person himself is the gift. This one, for one, for to one is giving. The person himself is not the gift. He is giving a gift. That is the difference. Do you get it? <clears throat> I want you to listen carefully. For ministry gifts, which are nine ministry gifts, the person himself is not the gift. He is giving a gift. Amen? You don't... You are, uh, you are given, you are not called to be with the word of wisdom. <laughs> you are given a gift to manifest it. You yourself is not, or you yourself, you are not that gift. But God gives you a gift. Do you get it? To manifest the glory of God. It is only ministry gifts that the person himself is the gift. But here, you are giving a gift. You got it. Okay. Thank you. For to one is giving the word of wisdom. Let's continue. Through the same... No, 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 no not this. The same verse. Through the same spirit to another, the word of what? The word of knowledge. Through the same spirit. Continue. To another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healings by the same spirit continue to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another descending of spirit to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues then the final verse there says what but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills as who wills is it as fane wills <laughs> is it as brother felix wills no you don't will them the holy spirit does he they are his gifts that's why it is very 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 delicate Understand these mysteries and it will help you. Amen? He gives you a gift. The one who has the gift 
becomes responsible to make sure he does not abuse the gift. Because the gift are not yours. They are of the spirit. Amen? They are of the spirit. So you don't abuse it. He gives you the gift to function in the body of Christ. To function in the kingdom of God. To use it to bless others for the profit of others. For the profit of all. Say with me, all. All include yourself. And the one who has the gifts means that you, your responsibility has increased. If you need healing, you better perform. If you have the gift of healing. If you need the word, Fanel, you better release the word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying it as a joke, but it's a word of the Lord to you, brother. So this thing of always trying to wait and let them lay hands on you for you to get a word is not a bad thing. But you yourself start getting ready because God will start using you to give the word. Hallelujah. If we need the word, the prophets, those who are able to, who have what? The gift of what? Prophecy. They are not necessarily prophets, but they have the gift of prophecy. Amen? Or they may have the gift of the word of knowledge. And to develop that gift, as you are involved in exhortation, you pray. The Bible says what? Pray that you may prophesy. You must earnestly desire the gifts before they become functional in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. So, so with spiritual gift, the person has the gifts. So, and so understanding this will help you. What then are spiritual gifts? They are what? They are brief, dramatic. I want you to write it down. They are brief, dramatic, brilliant arresting manifestations that happened and are finished. They are briefed. Number the first part, they are briefed. They are dramatic. Brilliant. Arresting manifestations that happened and are finished. They do not manifest all the time. And it's all at the will of God. Say with me, the will of God. Hallelujah. And we read the gifts. Now I have to show you, give you an introduction of how they are, how the gifts are. And the gifts are, the first one, they are A, B, and C. Let me put it this way. They are, they are group A. See, we need group A. Group B. Group C. So the, the, the first, the A group, uh, number one, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, descending of spirit. And these gifts are... They call them revelation gifts. A groups are what? Revelation. Say, say with me, revelation gifts. What do they do? They reveal something. They do what? They reveal something. The A group gifts are revelation gifts. They do what? They reveal. Say with me, they reveal something. They are what? The word of wisdom. A word of knowledge, descending of spirit. They reveal something. Amen? They are called the, the revelation gifts. The B group. The B group is the power gifts. Say with me, the power gifts. Are you getting the, you got the first one? Okay, the B, the power gifts. They are gifts of power. They do something. Say with me, they do something. They do something. Amen? They are what? Gifts of faith. Gifts of healing. Working of miracles. Hallelujah. They are what? 
gifts of faith, gifts of healing, and what? The working of miracles. These are gifts of power. They do something. They are gifts that do something. Hallelujah. You understand that? They do something. They call them power gifts. They make things happen. Faith, gifts of healing. And if you will soon discover the gifts of healings are in plural because of different type of healings. The walking of miracles. Walking of miracles. Those are the power gifts. Then the C group are what you call the vocal gifts. Say with me the vocal gifts. Vocal gift. The characteristics for vocal gift is that they say something. <clears throat> what do they do? They say something. Characteristics for vocal gifts is they, they say something. There are three. Different kinds of tongues. Interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Different kinds of tongues. Interpretation of tongues and prophecy. These are vocal gifts. They say something. Amen. We will explain all these gifts. Interpretation of tongues. Different kinds of tongues. And the gift of prophecy. Amen. These are vocal gifts. As the word of God says, God does not want you to be ignorant about these gifts, isn't it? So therefore, understanding them and learning about them will help you function in them easily. Because sometimes a gift is manifesting and you don't appreciate it because you don't know the gift. Amen. But now you do know. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We share with you that there are many other gifts and um, which will come under ministry gifts, even though they are not direct five ministry gifts. I'll share with you later on those gifts. They are gifts of leadership, gifts of mercy, gifts of celibacy, hallelujah, <laughs> gifts of giving, <laughs> helps, administrations, service, etc., etc. Those ones will share more on that. Hallelujah. There are many other gifts that comes into that category. Now, the final introduction is to say something about the difference between fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now, go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. But before we go, can someone pray and thank God for these gifts and say, thank you, Lord, because ignorance will be taken out of the church taken out of God's people. You can give the phone to anybody, Brooklyn or two. You can give it to. You. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we just want to say thank you, O oh God, for this word, O oh God. Father, we pray that as a body of Christ, O oh Lord, as believers, O oh Lord, we will be stopping, O oh Lord, ignorant, O oh Lord, about your word. Father, we pray that, O oh Lord, that we will learn more, O oh Lord, about the gifts of the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Father, cause us, O oh Lord, to know our gifts, O oh Lord, so that we can function it, O oh Lord, in those gifts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Father, we come against the spirit of ignorance in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this message, O oh Lord. Thank you for the the gifts oh lord that will be able or oh, that will be uh that will allow us all oh, to function oh lord in your kingdom in the mighty name of jesus christ oh lord we prayed amen, amen. give it to brock let me let him pray too lord i thank you because we will not perish for ignorance 
Thank you for enlightening us about the different types of gifts, how they function and why they function. Lord, I thank you because as we understand this, we will be able to function in those gifts and we will edify the body. That as we understand it, we will better fit ourselves in your global operation. That as we understand this, we will be a better person and we will better relate to the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for this knowledge that you have given to us. And in the name of Jesus, I seal it under the precious blood of the Lamb. May it, may it, may, may it be in embedded in our fabric and may we manifest this to the glory of God in Jesus name amen, amen. hallelujah amen. praise the Lord amen. now so let's go to Galatians 5 verse 22 from verse 22 it says We are now talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? <clears throat> Understanding this will help you so that you can separate gifts from the fruit. These are not gifts. These are fruits. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you there? Can we read together? <clears throat> But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Continue. Gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Wow. If you don't want to be under the law, yep, everybody say, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the law. Yes. Manifest the, the fruits of the spirit. You don't need the law. Amen. <laughs> Just manifest all the, gear, all the fruits of the spirit. The question today is, what is important? Is it the gift or the fruit? I have a mysterious answer for you. The gifts of the spirit are very important. All of them are important. Very important. The fruits are also very important. Why? The gifts manifests through you. Fruit manifests with you. They are from you. Gifts through you. Gifts are passing. They are not yours. But the fruits of the spirit manifests and shows who you are. Do you, are. Are you getting it? The fruit reveal who you are. The gift reveal who the spirit is through you. Amen? Because the fruit, you can manifest the gift sometime without the fruit. Because the fruit reveal what God has done in you. It reveals the character of Christ in you. Those are the fruits of the spirit. And I want to say. Without the fruits of the spirit. You will prophesy. You will do mighty things. And on that day Jesus will say to you. I don't know you. The fruits of the spirit keep you in the Lord. The gifts of the spirit manifest and make you puff up sometimes. Because it reveals the power of God and you become attractive. And sometimes you can lose it because of the mighty manifestations in your life. Without the fruit, you can't easily keep your salvation. Why am I saying this? Because the fruits of the spirit are the characters of the Holy Spirit. And those characters are, are built in you but through your walk with God. Once you come to Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit, you have the fruit. But the problem is that the fruits need to be watered. If you don't water it, it does not grow. And they are watered by the word of God. They are watered by dying to yourself, to your pride. They are watered by choosing to do good instead of evil. They are watered by not just doing what you think, but by doing what is right. 
Because sometimes you'll be tempted to do what you think instead of doing what is right. But you must do what is right, not what you think. Because most often what you think is not right. Are you getting me? So character is so important in the service of God. And let me put it this way. The fruits are the rail in which the gifts flow. You get it? The fruits are what? The rail. The path in which what flows? The gifts flow. Let me take the example of love. If you don't have love for people, you cannot manifest the gifts of the spirit. Because they are given for the profit of people, isn't it? For the profit of all. If you do not have love, I'm telling you, the gifts of the spirit will not flow towards people. You can minister to a people you don't love. That is just the truth. So the love is the foundation for spiritual gifts to flow on. Amen. So therefore the gifts of the, therefore the fruits of the spirit provide foundational ground for the gifts to function perfectly. And if you don't have the fruits, the gift cannot function for long because the gifts are functioning out of character. They function with character. I hope you are getting it. They function with character. Somebody who doesn't have the fruit manifest this gift can be very dangerous. Because the more good he does, the more harm he will cause. Because without the fruit, you are ministering, but you are ministering harm to people. And people will sense the flesh there. They will contact not God but you. And once they contact flesh, it's horrible. The reason is because the character has not been built. You cannot afford not building the character of the Holy Spirit. And let me put it this way. You can be in the law for 20 years and you don't have character. The reason is because people most often don't understand how important those characters are. They are so important that if you don't build them well, you can go to hell. Because if you have impatience there, you can commit sin of impatience easily. It's one of them. Let's start from 22. Can you put it back? 22. If you see all the fruits, the fruits required you to manifest certain things that will keep you calm. Keep you free from a lot of trouble. Let's go. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? It's, why is love number one? It covers all the other fruits. Because if you truly love, you, yes, if you truly love, it will manifest in joy. You know that? It will manifest in peace. It will manifest in what? Long suffering. Long suffering means what? Patience. Yes. Long suffering. It means that you are not so impatient with people. When somebody does something, oh God, you rise there like a lion. <laughs> like, are you patient with your wife or with your husband? You are trying there. Eh? that <laughs> somebody is trying to <laughs> you are speaking the truth and shaming the devil <laughs> Lord have mercy <laughs> hallelujah <clears throat> so the fruits of the spirit they are so important. They are kindness. I mean, they are love. Love. Let's read together again. Love. Joy. Peace. Okay. Before we move to verse 23, let's see something. Are you patient? 
Are you kind to us people? Always ask yourself the question, what would Jesus do? What will Jesus do? Always ask yourself, is this how Jesus would treat this person? And you know that's how it helped me with my relationship with my wife and my children. I always ask myself, what would Jesus do when my wife has answered me like this? And the anger is building up to tell her a piece of my mind. <laughs> she is laughing there. Ooh, I'm exposing it, sister. <laughs> Ooh. So what do you do? What will he speak in tongues say you're revealing my secrets these days? Because when you speak in tongues, it controls your character. That's true. That's one of it. That's one weapon. You just use it. You have just exposed one weapon. is pray in tongues. <laughs> you pray in tongues, but always ask yourself, what would Jesus do? You calm down immediately. Whenever you ask the question, what would Jesus do? You calm down immediately. It changes everything. Jesus will not strike back like a Malawa. Like a like bees. <laughs> you understand? Jesus will not. So you ask, what would Jesus do? Long suffering, kindness. I insist, children of God, you have to be kind towards one another. Give the person the benefit of the doubt. Paul says, always treating others better than yourself. That is serious. If you treat others better than yourself, you'll be so kind towards them that it will be different because the way you treat yourself, eh? every man is nice to himself, except you want to lie. That's the truth. We are nice to ourselves. And God is saying, treat people better than yourself. Wow. So God is expecting you to be nice towards everyone, towards Nelo. When Nelo comes, you'll be nicer than you'll be nice to yourself. That is serious. May God help each one of us. Amen? The standards of God are very high. Don't bring them down. God's standards are high. Hallelujah. Don't bring them down. And always insist on character. Because Satan will always try to get you off. Don't do what you feel. Do what is right. Never forget this statement. Don't do what you feel. Do what is right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Goodness. Are you a good man? A good woman? Are you good? No, I'm asking a question to all of you. Don't be bending your head as though I'm talking to somebody else. I'm just asking to all of you. Are you a good man? Or a good woman? Or a good, a good wife? A good, to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. So I'm saying, because that's what the scripture says. Goodness. You just have to be good. Amen? Do everything to be good. Do everything to be good. My wife knows, my mother knows, and the rest. You don't just come to me and start talking to, about somebody just in her. No, 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 no. I just, the other day my mother wanted to make a statement. I just, no, no, mom, I'm not interested. I just walk away. I was not being rude to her, but I'm just trying to say, this, what she say will hinder me from being good. Because in spite of once you hear something negative, you are no more the same. That is the truth. Don't hear it. It's not, you save yourself much trouble listening to evil things about others. It will hinder your goodness. It will hinder your kindness. It will hinder your peace. That is the truth. So don't even be part of it. Whether it is your daughter speaking to you or your son speaking to you or just don't be part of it. Because life is too short to spend it fighting. Life is too short, very short. The short time you should be here on earth, on earth you should be a good person. 
You should be a good man. You should be a good woman. You should be a good child. You should be a good. You should treat your parents with care. You should treat your parents with respect. You should treat your parents with honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening? If you don't like my message, I like it myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you faithful? Are you what? Are you a faithful person? <laughs> Can you be trusted? Or you are just a weapon waiting to strike? You are faithful for some time. Then soon, after some time, ooh, the least opportunity, you strike like a viper. <laughs> You are, no one can trust you. Today you are here, the next day you are out. You can't be trusted. I have a young man inside there laughing and enjoying himself. <laughs> are you faithful? Can your mother trust you? Can your brother trust you? Can your sister trust you? So faithfulness is fruits of the spirit. Amen? That's why I always love Brother Clement. He's the oldest member of this church, not with age. Because he's still a very young man. Amen? <laughs> not with age, but for years and longevity. People have come and gone and he has stayed. Hallelujah. He has been here from the beginning. He has never moved. He is the epitome of faithfulness. That's how you, you faithfulness is manifested. Somebody you can trust in the good times and in the bad times. Somebody you can depend on when things are good and when things are bad. Hallelujah. That is what we call faithfulness. Amen? Do you, do you manifest peace? Are you peaceful? Or you are always agitated, always afraid of the future? constantly afraid. You don't trust anything. You are worrying like anything else. You are blessed, but you are just thinking, what will happen tomorrow? I'm sure tomorrow horrible thing. Will you are restless. You have no peace. It's a sin. Because the word is saying that it's a fruit of the spirit. You have to be peaceful. You have to be at peace. Amen? You have to trust the Lord. Even in the midst of Corona, you have to be at peace. Always remember that God preserves your life. Let me tell you, no man can take that life from you, but until God says it is over. No Corona, no AIDS, no Ebola, no cancer, nothing can take your life from you until God says it is over. You must be at peace. Whether you are feeling weak, whether you are feeling sick, whether you are feeling what, Corona has no power over you. Your life is in the hands of God. I decree that peace must come upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, a small, you see somebody coughing smaller, that, so people will no more cough. It must be Corona. In the past, people will cough and sneeze and struggle with no more cold. But today, a little cold like this, somebody, Corona. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you have to tremble. <laughs> My little boy, Emmanuel, was I mean, coughing the other day and I just... I just say, my please don't distribute cough all over this place. <laughs> time. And then, uh, so not too long, I saw myself, I started coughing also. I said, my was coughing. And then the devil spoke. <laughs> the devil spoke to me and said, You say, Emma is distributing coffee. You have got it once. <laughs> because you proclaim there are power in words. I have regretted why I made that statement. It was two weeks ago. The Lord reminded me what I said. 
accused the young man of distributing cough all over the place. <laughs> and, 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 and it happened. My small baby started coughing too. Um, Anna. And then I said, so then the Lord told me, cancel the word you spoke. You decree that Emmanuel was distributing cough. And he got distributed. <laughs> So a little cough, so, and it is just the fear that is out there. So when a man wake up, the fear gripped me that this cough will spread all over. And we, I mean, without even noticing, I said it. So please, peace is better than fear. Amen. Because tell me who fear has helped. Has he helped you? When you are trembling, trembling, even we are trembling about your shadow. That helps nobody. You must know that peace is better. Shout with me, peace is better. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So Joy, are you a happy person? That is a serious one. Are you a happy person? That's hard, eh? <laughs> Uh, are you a happy person? Can I always meet a happy person when I contact you? Or I meet someone that is grumbling and complaining? Um, like the, um, always looking for something bad. Are you a happy person? Joy is one of the fruits of the spirit. Are you joyful? Are you joyful? Do you love people? Do you love people? I want you to ask the people you see around you. Ask if they love. Do you love people? Brother Felix, ask your, your people in, the, in, that, in that room there. <laughs> ask each one of them. <laughs> Even the leader in charge of our videos. Ask him. <laughs> do you love people <laughs> because it is the it, it, it is the core of Christianity love amen verse 23 as we conclude it says what gentleness self control wow are you gentle are you gentle are you a gentle person? You have, do you have a sweet personality? Or when people come to you, they pray first. <laughs> they pray that they may find grace before you. <laughs> the first pray, Father, grant that I'll find grace before this brother. When I meet uh, Fanel today, Lord. <laughs> Uh, are you gentle? Or when I meet Nello today, can I find some grace? <laughs> I, I, are you gentle? Is, is it? Is it? Are you? Do people find peace around you? Do, do, are you a gentle person? Are you gracious to people? When they make mistake, do you ignore it or do you react? gentleness may the character of christ be forming us may the character of christ be forming us in jesus name amen self-control wow this is serious the greatest battle on earth is that we have uncontrolled people living in the world who are not control of anything they are bent on making sure they don't have any self-control over their pleasure, over their things, over their stuff. That's why the world is struggling today. That's why there's pain on earth today. Uncontrolled people are leading our world. That is where the issue is. This self-control thing is so important, I cannot even speak much on it. Because self-control uh, controls you, your character, your, your wants, your desires. Amen? 
Do you understand? It means that when it comes to money, are you self-controlled with money? Are you satisfied with what you have? Or you want to steal others or something else? Or you want to hurt others? Can somebody make a statement to you and you control yourself? Can somebody, they, they call it, uh, I, I normally don't say these things, but I can just say, say, say it for, you, for just for, for explanation. You are, you are driving on the street and somebody make a finger to you. I don't know how they even make fingers. But what do you do? How do you react? Do you try to show the person that you are tough and drive? Can you control yourself? The other day I, I was just passing and one guy just decided to race with me. I don't understand why he was racing with me. He boo, came and passing and just slowed down in front of me. And <laughs> what this guy, what Jesse DePlante said, as best to sauce. <laughs> came. The sauce came upon me. And then I heard the word self control. Self control. And I calmed down. I started driving also below speed limit. The temptation, there was another, I could just pass him and go. I just slowed down to show him that I'm not affected by what he's doing. I just slowed down. Learn self-control. Because the flesh would stir you to to react based on people's actions. You must learn not to go low when they go low. Don't make it with the fake politicians who, who say it and then practice something else. But you are a Christian. When they go low, don't go low. Hallelujah. Never go low when others go low. Stay there. Because self-control is part of what God has given you. Hallelujah. You are flowing in the Holy Spirit. You are walking in the Holy Spirit. Refuse to go with them. Control yourself. The flesh will tell you, I insist, do what is right, not how you feel. There are times which you feel as to really deal with somebody, but the right thing is to bless the person. Amen? The right thing is to do what? To bless the person. Let me tell you, when, you are, when people are accusing you and you decide to be fair, oh, I'm telling you, those people will be shocked. Those people will be shocked. So those things have happened. Has somebody attacked you one day? Somebody will call you and just say a statement that is an attack on you. What do you do? Do you say, let me show this brother that this thing doesn't happen like this. Or do you say, okay, brother, I can allow myself to be abused and I will not react. I'm telling you, that brother will leave from there knowing that he just met a man of God or a woman of God. Because nothing reveals who you are as character. Nothing reveals who you are as what? As character. There are many people who were gifted by God with different all type of spiritual gifts. But character killed their ministry. Bad character. The question today for you, my dear brethren, what is your character? But the gift, the fruits of the Spirit are loaded by the Holy Spirit. They are there so that they can grow. Every one of us have those fruits. We have not just developed them because we have allowed the flesh to prevail. Hallelujah. No gifts will be effective without the fruit. I insist, no gifts will. Without what? Without the fruit. So brethren, we conclude today by saying this. The gifts of the spirit are wonderful. They are great. They are mighty. But I want to say this to you. If you want the gifts to flow and function well, you must develop the fruits. 
Amen? So that you soon will not become a disgrace. If you have no patience, you have anger. You have no patience. You have what? You will disgrace yourself in the midst of a, an important thing that will, instead of giving people a message, people will receive the words of you. You may have blessed them with maybe a prophecy, but a little thing of anger. Make them, you manifest that anger so badly that your prophecy means nothing. Character reveals who you are. I insist, character reveals who you are. The fruits of the Spirit are not an option for Christianity. Modern Christianity tells you you can go without them. It's a lie. It's what? It's a lie. Let's go back to the basic Christianity. Fruits are so important. I was telling a brother the other day, I was just talking, we're, we're talking, not a brother, one of the spiritual fathers who is around, uh, talking with um, uh, Pastor Paul Foker and the wife, this uh, uh, pup. I call them Papa because he's like my grand spiritual father. Uh, I've explained this to you all. But I was talking with them. We're just fellowshipping at a, a home and I said something. I said, in those days, those early days, Christianity, you see a brother, you're excited. Christianity was full of joy. Brethren, when I came to Christ in the 80s, as a young man, I remember when I entered the church, people literally almost clapped. They were excited. They were happy to see a young man who just came to Christ. I was a small boy. Just got into what they call second from one. I don't know how they call it here. Middle school. Okay, it's a middle school. And you know what? The people were excited. They were happy. Things were, brethren were just so happy. There was so much joy. With time, character started dying. Where we started fighting each other. We started fighting each other. Today, you can pass a brother and it doesn't mean much. In the past, seeing a brother was like joy unspeakable. I remember those days, you don't even dare speak about a brother behind him. Oh, we don't. I remember those early days. It will, it, you will feel so convicted. I remember we meet in meetings like this in those days in the 80s. They would ask, who here has something against his brother? Go and fix it. We will not even start a service until it is fixed. Have you had anything against your brother and the rest? But today we just move. You may be hating your brother. You may be angry with your brother. And you come and say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What has happened to Christianity? Because we have ignored character. We have ignored the fruits of the spirit. And I, I have to tell you, the fruits of the spirit are not to be ignored anymore. They are a must in these last days. We, you can't prevail without them. Christianity without character will be success, susceptible to the Antichrist. You submit yourself to the reign of the Antichrist easily if you don't have a character, if you don't have self-control, if you don't have gentleness, if you don't have long-suffering, patience, and the rest, faithfulness, you will submit. So, so we're just talking about it and fellowshipping about it and I share with them. And I said, those days Christianity was sweet. You see a brother like this, you are so happy. You see a sister, you are so happy. Small thing like this in your heart against your brother, it is immediately corrected. People were ready to be raptured. People were ready to go. They were ready if God comes, they are not ashamed. Today, how many are ready? 
We have issues with one another. We talk against one another. We fight against one another. We find way to complain about one another. Have you heard that, brother? Have you heard that, sister? What is that? It is fake Christianity. It is a Christianity without character. May God help us. May God help us. And may God deliver the church of the living God from fake Christianity. Amen. Amen. I want us to stand up together and pray. Character is part of spiritual gifts. Because to flow in the gifts of the spirit, you need the characters of the spirit. Amen. I want you to pray. Just pray that God will help the church. That God will deliver us. And God will be gracious to us. Please pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And all of you at home, join us and pray. As we pray one by one. All of you at home, please join us and pray. That the character of God will be manifested. That the church will take this seriously. And the church will really take character seriously. Gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we want to intercede for the church. We want to intercede for our brothers, Father God. We pray for ourselves, Father God. We pray for ourselves, Father God, for the church to start to fight one another, Father God. Or when we feel like we're tempted, oh God, to criticize one another, Father God. Or we that we intercede to one another, Father God. Oh, Father God, we pray for each member of the team. Or we pray, Father God, we, we pray, Father God, that we intercede for each other, Father God. Instead of uh, of point out, oh God, our differences, oh God, uh, we pray for the church, Father God. We pray for the elders, Lord. Uh, we pray for the men, oh God, uh, despite our differences, oh God. We pray, Father God, that we intercede for one another. Or we pray for the women of the church, oh God. Uh, we pray for the youth. Uh, we pray, oh God, for the children, Father God. We pray that you unite us as a body, as a church, Lord. Uh, oh Father God, we we pray, we pray Father God, uh, this church is not a church, oh God. Uh, oh, that there should be gossips, oh God. Uh, there should there should not be no room for gossip in this church, Father God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we cast out any spirit of differences, oh God, any spirit of division, Father God. We refuse, Father God, the fruit of darkness is not a part of this church, oh God. We declare the fruit of the Spirit, oh God, is our portion, Father God. In the name of Jesus, it's a moment, Father God, we release the fire of the Holy Spirit, God. We release the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to be the part of darkness, oh God, because this light uh, that you talk about in John, oh Father God, uh, should light him on us, oh God. There shouldn't be any form of darkness, oh God. Uh, we declare the, the fruit of, of light, oh God, shall shine him on this church. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we declare that your love shall shine, oh God. We declare that your love shall overcome, oh God, every foot of darkness in this church. In the name of Jesus, uh, we declare that's our portion, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for teaching us about the fruits of the Spirit. We thank you for teaching us that this is a foundation for which, on which the gifts of the Spirit manifest. That we as a church, we should not ignore this. That I as an individual should not ignore it. That I should work in collaboration with the Holy Spirit to develop the fruit. That I should work in collaboration with the Holy Spirit to develop love, to develop patience, to develop long-suffering, to develop self-control, that to develop self-control towards each other. Lord, I pray that we'll obey the Holy Spirit as it as concerns this, that we'll work diligently, that we'll search the scripture diligently to, to enhance this, this fruit in our life, that through this we'll provide a better platform for the Spirit to manifest. Lord, I tell you that I pray that we'll be a church that loves one another, that we'll be a church that cherishes one another, that we'll be a church that is patient with one another, we'll be a church that supports one another, that we'll be a church that endorses one another, that we'll be a church that promotes one another, we'll be a church that speaks well of one another. Lord, I thank you for this ministry, thank you for this knowledge that has been given to us, that we'll not ignore it, oh Lord, that we'll build on this as a foundation, and that in this church, this the, the, the gifts of the spirit will manifest because the fruits have been dealt with in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me just finish the verses here. 
before we finish praying, one person will pray. Uh, the, the verses here that are part of it, which I, I never shared, it says here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Uh, can you continue and put it? Put uh, verse 24, verse 24, and then verse 25, and verse 26. Okay, it says what? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. You understand? Those who have Christ, they have done what? They have crucified the flesh. They have crucified what? The flesh and what? With his, he has passions and he has what? His desires. Amen? Verse 25 says what? If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen? Verse 26. It says what? Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. That is the scripture. Amen? That is the scripture. It's right there. Let us not be come conceited. That's proudful, prideful. Provoking one another. And doing what? Envying one another. Wow. Envy is as cruel as the grave, as the Bible says. Amen. So flee from it. Amen? Amen? Yes, please, one person, just pray and conclude. real, oh God. Lord, your word is real, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your word concluding everything that you have spoken to us today, oh God. Lord, we separate ourselves, oh God, from the passions and the desires of the flesh. Crucifying them daily will become our goal, oh God. Crucifying the flesh so that the gifts of the, sp of the Spirit may, may, may be free to manifest in us, oh God. Lord, crucifying, oh God, the consist of our mind, the pride, the self-opinated tendency, Lord, Lord, to crucify that, oh God, to crucify all provoking oh provocation, God, to crucify God. all envy, all covetousness, all greed, all desire to have what others have, Lord, Lord, that daily we will crucify our flesh, that the Spirit of God and His fruits may become abundant, abundant in our lives, oh God, Lord, thank you for your word, Lord, thank you for giving us practical things to walk on. I pray that each one of us will have something practical that we'll walk on this week, oh God. One fruit, oh God. Two fruits of 